This film on the F-2H2 Banshee will show the operation of some of the important aircraft systems. These include the flight systems pertaining directly to the flight of the aircraft. The fuel and oil systems and the electrical systems will be covered. The film will also show some of the operational equipment. The tricycle landing gear, including the wheel well doors, is electrically operated. Emergency landing gear extension is provided by an emergency position of the landing gear control handle. In this position, the landing gear actuators are disengaged. The main gear falls free to the down position, and the nose gear pneumatic emergency air cylinders push the nose gear into the down position. The main wheels are equipped with hydraulic disc type brakes with an air boost system which provides increased braking force. The brakes on each wheel are independent and may be applied individually or together. Wings are folded and unfolded electrically. The wing pin locks are manually operated through a mechanical linkage. The wing flaps are electrically operated and may be stopped at any desired position. The flaps are connected by a bungee to the control stick so that when flaps go down, the stick is moved ahead. The flaps will blow up at speeds in excess of 165 knots. Speed or dive brakes are electrically operated and can be used at any flight speed to slow down the airplane. The speed brakes are controlled by a toggle switch on the right-hand throttle grip. All trim tabs are electrically operated. A combination trim and anti-balance tab is installed on the rudder and is controlled by a nose left, nose right toggle on the left console aft of the throttle quadrant. Aileron and elevator trim tabs are controlled by a four-way switch on the control stick hand grip. Aileron control is assisted by a hydraulic boost system with a separate pump and motor for each aileron. The switch on the left console controls both aileron boost systems. Forward on the right console, you will find the yaw stabilizer switch, which automatically corrects for directional instability of the airplane. A limit switch at the main landing gear scissors automatically disconnects the system on the ground. The test position bypasses the landing gear disconnect so that the system can be checked while taxiing. The fuel system for this aircraft operates by pressure feed to the engine. The center fuselage tank feeds directly to the fuel system manifold. The forward and aft fuselage tanks transfer to the center tank through gravity feed lines with submerged fuel pumps to transfer the last 900 pounds. The two stub wing tanks transfer through a submerged pump to the center tank. Tip tank fuel is transferred to the center tank by air pressure supplied by the engine compressors. The total fuel in overload fighter condition is 1,277 gallons or 7,662 pounds of aviation gasoline or approximately 8,200 pounds of JP3. Indicators on the pilot's forward sub-panel show when fuel is being transferred from the stub and tip tanks. The transfer switches are located on the left console aft of the throttles and the fuel quantity, fuel flow, and fuel totalizer indicators are forward of the throttles. The oil system provides lubrication to the accessory gearbox and main bearings regardless of the attitude of the airplane. To do this, the oil reservoirs located in the wing operate under four pounds per square inch pressure at the tank, while high pressure oil lines operate under pressures ranging from five to 90 pounds per square inch, depending on engine speeds. The airplane is equipped with a 24-volt DC single-wire electrical system powered by one 24-volt 34-ampere-hour battery and two 28-volt 300-ampere engine-driven generators. Direct current power distribution is divided on three buses. The primary bus supplies DC power for equipment essential to safe flight and operates the inverter to power the AC flight instruments. With battery generator switch in battery generator position and both generators inoperative, the primary bus only is energized. With both generators out, 
placing the electric power switch in battery only position will for a short time energize the secondary bus to power other equipment. A third bus, the monitor bus, powers the pilot suit heater and gun camera heater. In addition, the IFF destructor and canopy control circuits are energized when the battery is installed regardless of the position of the battery generator switch. The AC power system consists of a main inverter and a standby or alternate inverter which supplies three-phase AC when DC current is available. The airplane is equipped with an automatic cabin pressurization and temperature control system which uses compressed air from the engine compressor sections. When the ventilating control is in foot heat position, pressurization air enters the cabin in the region above the pilot's feet. When the control is in defrost position, all the incoming air is directed to the windshield and canopy. Cabin pressure control is automatically controlled within two ranges selected by the toggle switch on the pressurization control panel. With the switch in normal position, at from sea level to 5,000 feet, cabin altitude follows the actual altitude. From 5,000 to 13,000 feet, cabin altitude remains at 5,000 feet. Above 13,000 feet, the cabin pressure is held at 3.3 pounds above the outside pressure. With the switch in combat position, cabin pressure is the same as normal position up to 35,000 feet. From 35,000 to 50,000 feet, the regulator adjusts to a combat ratio of 2.3 PSI pressure differential. Above 50,000 feet, a differential pressure of 1.3 PSI is maintained. When the cabin temperature control switch is in the automatic position, a cabin thermostat controls the mixing of hot and cold air to maintain the temperature selected at the thermostat. When the switch is held at either hot or cold position, the automatic controls are bypassed. An emergency ventilation control on the right console provides ram air ventilation, opens the dump valve, and closes the pressurization shutoff valve. The oxygen equipment in the airplane is the automatic positive pressure diluter demand regulator type. The system operates on a full charge of approximately 1850 PSI to supply positive pressures of oxygen for operational flights up to equivalent cabin altitudes of 43,000 feet. There is provision for emergency descent from 50,000 feet in case of loss of cabin pressurization. Additional pressure and flow indicators are mounted forward on the left console where they can be more easily read by the pilot. The anti-blackout system or G-suit draws compressed air from the compressor section of each engine. The valve opens at 1.75 G. When the control is set in the low position, one pound per square inch of air is provided for every one G increase thereafter. When the control is in the high position, the unit provides one and one half pounds per square inch per G of acceleration. Pressing down on the top of the valve manually inflates the suit. Electronic equipment in the F2H2 will be covered briefly in this film. For details and operating information, consult your flight handbook. The master control panel contains the radio master switch and the volume control. The VHF transmitter receiver ANARC1 gives two-way voice communication on a line of sight range. The radio compass ANARN6 can be used over a 250 mile range for homing compass or position finding as well as for normal range reception. The navigation receiver ANARR2A completes the list of communication gear aboard. The IFF receiver transmitter ANAPX6 is used for identification purposes. This unit is fitted with a destructor switch for use if in danger of falling into enemy hands. 
Controls for the radar set AN-APG-30 are located on the left console forward of the fire control panel. This equipment provides automatic and continuous range to the fire control system. For the radio altimeter AN-APN-1, the power switch is at the indicator. The range switch controls operations from 0 to 400 feet in the low range and 400 to 4,000 feet in the high range. The altitude limit switch is located on the left console after the throttle. The airplane is armed with four 20 millimeter forward firing guns with 150 rounds of ammunition per gun. The guns are charged pneumatically and fired electrically. Gun control switches are on the main instrument panel. The armament master switch must be on before the guns can be fired. The gun control switches for inboard guns respectively have three positions. To charge the guns, move the gun control switches from off to safe. When ready to fire, the switches must be in the ready position. The guns may be fired in pairs or in salvo. The gun trigger is on the control stick grip. The gun camera operates automatically when the armament master switch is on and the trigger is squeezed. On the wings, there are launchers for eight rockets or 100-pound bombs. Four 250-pound bombs may be carried or two 500-pound bombs as well as certain combination bomb and rocket loads. Bomb and rocket controls consist of bomb and rocket master switch with safe and ready positions, an arming switch with nose and tail, tail and safe position, and a station selector. The bomb and rocket release switch is on the control stick. If the station selector is placed in number one position, launcher station one is fired. Selector position two fires station seven. Selector 3 fires Station 3. Selector 4 fires Station 5. As the selector is rotated in order, Stations 8, 2, 6, and 4 are fired. Rockets or bombs may be fired in pairs by originating the fire order in positions 5 to 8 inclusive. Pairs are fired symmetrically from outboard to inboard as the station selector is rotated from five to eight. This airplane employs the fire control system Mark 6 Mod 0, which is a lead computing reflector sighting system. It incorporates a Mark 8 Mod 0 gyroscopically controlled sight. The manual ranging control is on the left-hand throttle. The fire control system may be used in air-to-air -air gunnery operations or for air-to-ground rocketry and may be used in conjunction with radar ranging. This film has covered some of the systems and operational equipment on the F2H2 Banshee. Your ability to get high operational efficiency out of this versatile and effective airplane will be improved by further study of your flight handbook and current technical bulletins.